coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom Poetry Apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom and today we're going to talk about some poetry apps, an opportunity to integrate poetry into uh, teaching reading and writing. And the first place I go to every time I think about poetry is Read, Write, Think. Read, Write, Think is a great website and if you search for it, actually on uh, Google you'll immediately get one of the main categories which is what we're going to talk today about is student interactive. So if you click on student interactive it's going to take you directly into web-enabled interactives that allow kids to create straight on your Chromebook or if you have any other uh, laptop, but the same are available on your iPad as apps. So you can download them and use them as apps or you can use them on computers and uh, use them at with whatever you have available and you can then choose the writing poetry section which will lead you to a whole slew of interactives that help kids and adults potentially create poetry and walks them through a few steps as you do that. So let's go to one of these uh, one of these options and we'll start with theme poems used to be called shape poems we call them theme poems and the first thing you do is you plug in your name and you don't need an account you don't need to even give your real name you just need a name a nickname or a first name would work and this is what I love about these is that you don't have to say them, you don't need an account, so kids at all ages can just create without worrying about privacy or any other features, and uh, the minute they're off of it, it disappears, unless you want to save the file, and then if you save the file, you save it actually on your device, so it doesn't get saved on the cloud unless uh, you create a picture out of it. The first thing that they asked me to do was uh, choose a shape so I can choose a shape. Right now um, I can't go back because I chose a shape as an example. I chose a, a drop and then you can think of words and these words are just part of your brainstorm. They don't have to be in your poem but they can be and it's a good way to get vocabulary work going and uh, recently we did a number of episodes on vocabulary so this is a way to start. And now you can see I've started creating. There's a title to the poem. I use the word uh, rain. Your words are right there so they're there to think about, to use, but they don't get placed inside the tier immediately and as you write the text conforms to that shape of the tier eventually creating this uh, tier shape poem and then when you're finished you can print this out which is one way to do it and it shows you exactly what it'll look like on the page you can save it or you can share it so you can actually email it to a teacher to your parents to your friends so there is a way to communicate without actually saving it online and then if you want you just go to new poem I didn't save it and it's telling me I didn't save it and then you can see lots of options to start with a theme. So if you're teaching poetry, this is a great way to get, to get kids creative, but also give them a topic because the shape does dictate the topic to a degree. So this is one uh, poem. Um, the next one I want to share is called Word Mover, and this is basically the same thing as uh, you do with magnets on a fridge or on a board. Uh, it's just a lot more open-ended because you're not dependent on physical magnet. And what uh, this does is it allows you to have a selection of words that then you put together and create your poem. Very much like the previous one, you can put in a title and your name. Um, you can also create new word banks. Lots of opportunities here. And when you're done, Let's say this is my poem. Again, you can save as a draft, you can send it to printer, you can email it. So lots of opportunities to share it without actually uh, interfering with privacy or anything else. Again, to get in, you don't need uh, much. So uh, if we go back to the tool just to show you how it works from the beginning, We'll go back in and go to the student interactive um, word mover. And just wanted to show you how it actually gets started. And you can see that it comes up, uh, in this case, on the Chromebook. 
you can start a new poem, and the word bank can come from a few famous works that were included here, not very many. Justin is an example, this is the way I think about it, but you can also create your own words. So even if you use something like America the Beautiful and it gives you some words, you can actually click on this plus and add any word you want. So the fact that you're limited to a subset of words does not need to dictate exactly what's going to be in your poem. So this is Word Mover, and again, it has a fantastic app that is really easy easy to use on the iPad as well. The next one I wanted to talk about is the acrostic poem. And in the acrostic poem, what you do is you put in your name, you put in your topic, you generate again a list of words connected to that. So the brainstorming aspect is supported. Then when you continue, you actually write it out and each word needs to start with obviously um, uh, the first letter needs to be part of that original words you used and if you click on it you'll get some sample words they'll give you an idea so if kids are stuck on those letters it gives them a way to get out of it and start a sentence and then when you're done It'll show you what the poem will print like and what it'll look like saved. So this is acrostic poem. There are other poems like the Diamante poem. That's another option, haiku, which I personally love. And if you want to see it, go and explore. It's a great website, lots of options and lots of ways to really share poetry between kids in your classroom and support that creation of poetry. And the next thing that I want to talk about is Rhymer. Rhymer is an app on the iPad, but it also has a website. What it allows you to do is uh, plug, uh, write in the word that you're looking for a rhyme. So if you are writing rhyming poetry, and I don't necessarily recommend that old poetry will be rhyming because obviously it's not, and more than that, kids sometimes get hung up on their rhyming and don't make as much sense because they're really fixated on that. On the other hand, rhyming is a great way to teach a basic word skill, so there is benefit to that as well. What you do in this case is just write down a word, let's write a word like train and say rhyme, and what it's going to do is it's going to generate words that rhyme with train. In this case, it's a very common word and they found 159 end rhymes with one syllable and then you get two syllable options and even three syllable options and more. And so what you're seeing is this is a way if kids are insisting or you want them to do some rhyming, this is a way to do it. The one thing about this website that doesn't pop as badly on the app is that it does have ads. So this is a great way uh, and a great moment to talk to kids about um, focusing on the main thing and knowing that ads are sometimes there. but they're not necessarily connected to what we're doing, so we're going to ignore them. So this is, um, this is really a way to uh, generate those rhymes quickly. And again, it's very important if kids are stuck and they, they really want that rhyme, it's a really good way to do that. So this is Rhymer, and this is a great tool for all kids. So today we talked about some tools that will help kids write poetry, and I'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom. Thank you.